Welcome to episode 139 of Beyond the Brick. I'm Joshua Hanlon. And I'm Matthew Kay. And this episode of Beyond the Brick is brought to you by Brickmania.com. Brickmania makes quality custom kits made from genuine Lego parts and premium third-party add-ons such as Brick Arms. And they have a special going this week for free shipping and a Spitfire mini kit on all orders above $100. So some great uh, little mini kit you can get there and free shipping if you spend $100 or more. I encourage you to check that out at BrickMania.com. And I'll make sure to include a link to their website in the description of this video if you want to check that out. Now, joining us on the show tonight, we're very happy to have Mike Doyle. He is 47 years old, a graphic designer. And if you've been listening to the show for quite a while now, we interviewed Mike on our audio-only podcast a little over a year ago, back when we were audio-only. So I'll have a link to that interview in the description of this episode, and you can hear a little more about his history with LEGO in that show. So it's great to have you back on the show, Mike. Well, thank you, Joshua. Thanks for inviting me. Again. Yes. <laughs> no problem. And uh, one of the big reasons we wanted to have you back on is your, your new book that was just released, Beautiful LEGO 2, which you can see on the shelf behind me here. So if you just want to start off by talking a little bit about your, your beautiful LEGO book series and how that first started getting going. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, No Starch Press uh, contacted me a few years ago. Uh, uh, they had seen some of my work online and uh, wanted to know if I'd do a book with them. And um, I didn't really have uh, many pieces. I still don't have many pieces because I build very slow. But I suggested that uh, it would be a, a very interesting thing to do a a um, Lego book that's more of a, a coffee table uh, fine art book. And um, so we did that, um, inspired by the many um, mock AFOLs a and other uh, designers out there. Uh, we began to put together um, the first one, Beautiful Lego, um, which is more of a general book, um, a lot of beautiful creations in it. And um, that went really well. That that came out a year ago. And then um, uh, talked about doing another one. I thought maybe it would be a good idea if this is to become a series to allow each book to have a different theme to it, to give it kind of a curatorial um, um, focus or lens to uh, look through. Uh, so the second book I uh, named Dark, and it's... Uh, somewhat loosely uh, based on darkness, uh, things that are either um, uh, could be macabre or, or dark in nature or could be something more playful like um, chocolate cake or um, <laughs> dark ocean or something like that. Um, so that, that was that. The first book, it took about a year and a half to make. Uh, and then the second one, we knew we wanted it out by Christmas and worked very hard to get um, that done in six months. So, um, But I, I think the second one, we really wanted to improve on the first, so we gave it a hardbound cover and um, have nearly twice as many builders in it um, and maybe a fifth more of the pages from 280 to... 340 pages. And so what is the process like for you to, to get people to contribute to the book? Do you solicit uh, outwardly, or do people ask you? Uh, no, uh, mostly soliciting. Um, I'll go through uh, some of the blogs, Brothers Brick, um, a lot of Flickr, um, mm -hmm. and some mock pages as well, um, scouring the internet as for anything that I can find that seems appropriate. Usually I look, um, in this case I had the dark theme so it helped to uh, kind of narrow down my, my search parameters and then uh, from there began to build up um, some names and mocks that I thought were interesting. Usually it, it uh, can vary from things that, sub if it's an unusual subject matter that someone has pulled off that I've never seen before, um, I might grab that. Uh, other times, it's um, the um, the beauty, overall beauty of it, mm -hmm. or maybe technical um, achievement in it. Uh, there's no always difference. something unique. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's uh, just beautifully photo. It's nice, but it's very beautifully photographed. 
Um, so there's a lot of different things that I look for uh, in the images. In this last book, um, I tried something new where I uh, ran a sort of contest out of um, out of mock pages and solicited um, some folks to enter and got a lot of good work from that too. That's cool. Yeah, so you're kind of like saying, "Hey, could you guys build in this thing, and then I'll put it in the book," and that's like the the reward or the prize. Yeah, yeah. I gave them some um, suggested topics. Uh, a lot of times, what will happen is um, the book will begin to kind of fill up with um, topical ideas for chapters, or I might have one strong piece, but I don't have anything else to support it. But mm -hmm. I think that'd make a really good chapter. And this was a great way to kind of help to flesh out some of those chapters. Sure, you kind of fill in the pieces, yeah. Literally. <laughs> very good. Were very many of the builds built specifically for the book, or were most of them just ones you found online and then you wanted to include in it? Yeah, for the, uh, for the contest, I had wanted people to build for, uh, for the book. Um, so I might say that maybe one fifth of the book or um, one sixth of it is was made for it, maybe a little less, and then the rest are things that I found um, online. Mhm. Mm Very cool. So yeah, there's a lot of really awesome builds in there. I was going through it earlier today. I actually just got my copy today, <laughs> which. Uh, Funny enough, I think uh, we were talking before the show, and you don't even have yours yet, so it's weird how that works out. Yeah. But, uh, oh, uh, yeah, huh. no, I know. It's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> you know, right behind you there, you just had to tease me with it. <laughs> yeah, sorry to do that, I guess, but uh, I'm glad I was able to, to look through it before the show here. A lot of really great builds in there from uh, a lot of builders you know, we've had on the show and are really well known in the community. Uh, are there are were there any builds that really stood out to you in the book that you wanted to make sure you you definitely included? Are there any off the top of your mind that you definitely wanted in the book? Um, I mean, there's a few designers that really lended themselves to the theme. Uh, one of them, and I'm gonna I'm gonna botch their names. I know it. Um, one is um, uh, Mihai Maras Mihu. I don't know if you can pronounce it any better. But um, he's he's out of uh, Europe, and his works, I really like him. He's he's rather new, but he has an aesthetic that's very unusual, a little bit um, a little bit creepy, and um, very peculiar. So I knew I knew I wanted him, and he fit, he felt like a really good fit for the book. And then there was a, I started the book with Bart um, de Dobler, um who did pieces like the hive. He does very kind of insectoid, but um, they have a they have a, a very moody uh, presence to them, very and very dramatic and somewhat large scale at times too. Um, they were they were two that I knew that I wanted to get in just because they were such a perfect fit for the book. Mm -hmm. And, and there's even with uh, a few of the, the builds in there, I th as I was looking through it, there's some uh, text describing it. More, most of them just kind of have maybe the, the title of the build. Uh, you usually try to put how many pieces are in each build I saw, so I, I know a lot of the time that can be hard to decide, but I, I'm assuming you aim for kind of a general goal with that. Yeah, in the first book, uh, we didn't, they didn't think to do that, and someone had suggested it. Um, to me, and uh, I sort of went back and forth on that because, as you said, who really knows, right? When you're building, unless you're doing uh, something very small, um, it's really a guess. And I know there were a number of pieces where I um, I said to myself, "This could not possibly be," and I I didn't include the number. Um, I tried to keep it as accurate as I could, you know, based on what they gave me and what I I what seemed realistic, you know. But um, I'm not, fifteen I'm not million pieces? What? No. <laughs> yeah, huh? uh, so I'm not. I'm not sure if that that's a a good idea or not in the end. Um, but it it. Um, I mean, you know, designers usually know how many pieces it takes when they're looking at a piece. Mm -hmm. uh, how many are in it? Um, that was more for the kind of the um, uh, outsider looking in and seeing these 
to see what it takes. Sometimes they don't have a sense, too, of the scale of it. I think we generally have a sense of the scale of these things. We can identify a piece or two. But a lot of people really don't even have that much. And seeing that it's 15,000 pieces and not, you know, <laughs> what? 500 or 200, you know. Yeah, and especially with uh, something as uh, like this, like, I know when you're in like a convention hall and you're looking at uh, a creation on a table, it's very easy to judge scale. But sometimes not, but most of the time. But uh, looking at a photograph of a creation, you know, with no reference points, and you can very easily kind of warp, you know, what's actually going on there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. And I know that. Like you said, aiming it towards the, the more general public people, if they're just you know picking the book up for a friend or just think it lo looks interesting, uh, it's nice to be able to, to kind of get an image of their head of how many pieces that this build is and get that ideal for scale, like you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I didn't want is to give the impression that more pieces is better, and uh, um, hopefully... People can get past that, you know. I don't think you. I don't. I didn't get that feeling at all looking through the book. I know I'll, I'll, you have include quite a few uh, smaller builds and still very well done builds that are that are smaller. Uh, it didn't actually seem like there were that many huge ones. Uh, one that sticks out in my mind that was fairly big was uh, Ian Heath's Space Kraken build uh, that I know he. I think just had to rebuild recently because the whole thing fell apart. But I, I did spot that one in there. So that's one one of the bigger builds I think you included. Yeah, yeah, that's a funny one too because I um I didn't think that was as big as it was, for some reason um, <laughs> that kind of surprised me. I guess mm -hmm. even for an experienced builder, sometimes you uh, you can kind of be thrown off a little bit. And Ian's pretty good at throwing you people off. Uh, he, he is. He's yeah. completely. He's a mystery. <laughs> you know, you can just he can just throw it out there. You know, throw it off. Well, what? What? Huh? What's going on? <laughs> Well, he doesn't yeah. usually build that big. Um, to, yeah, that could be one of his bigger builds, right? I think so. I mean, he, he's a, he's a great uh, you know character builder, as he says. You know, so he does a lot of uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe the large diorama thing. I, I guess he's done uh, recently. He did. Um, mm, this is horrible, Josh. Uh, Brickcon, uh, video game based, uh, large. Was it Doom? Was that? Doom, yes. I think that was the name of it, yeah. Massive, like table size built, which I've never seen from him before. Something huh. that large. And I, you know what? We should probably, I should probably just stop talking because yeah. I, I'm not a, a, a scholar of Ian's work here, but, you know, <laughs> love you, Ian. I love Ian's work, too. He, he, oh, yeah. I, I, I couldn't get very much in. He, he's more of a, he's got more of a sense of humor, and um, it didn't seem to fit the theme as, as well. Uh, <laughs> so. Unfortunately, I could only squeeze in one or two of his pieces. But so I'm now, you, you, you mentioned um, uh, including piece counts in uh, this uh, book. Uh, are there any other kind of suggestions that you've taken from your previous uh, book or learning experiences or alterations? Uh, what, what's changed in the second one, um, like format-wise? I, I, I think that was one of the only ones. The... Um, this one I included, uh, and this is another sketchy thing I'm not too sure about, is I included digital um, uh, creations. There weren't too many of them, though, just a few. And in those cases, I did um, note, uh, make a note near the title, you know, that they were digitally created. Mm -hmm. um, there, the, the, another difference is that there are fewer, um, it's more pictures and less talk less people um, writing. Um, it just kind of worked out that way. It wasn't planned or there's no real um, rhyme or reason behind that. Um, I think I think um, this book we were clustering more against themes and less against personalities. In the first book there was a lot of personalities um, or people that... You uh, interspersed interviews in between... Uh, yes, like, I did that. Yeah. I did that. In the in the first book, honestly, we I began with the interviews, and then I realized it might be more interesting just to pose a question. After I got a couple interviews back, I thought, well, maybe maybe it would be better just to um, give a person a question. I just asked everyone why Lego. Why do you like Lego? 
or why Lego? Why do you build with it? And then let them go off, and um, that seemed to be a better way to go. So in the first book, we had a couple interviews, and those were sort of the first people that I just happened to um, send. And after that, um, we had the why Lego question. I continued that why Lego in this book as well. Very cool. And I think that's also it's important to acknowledge that the the Lego book market, as it were, is uh, you know somewhat saturated, or there's more than one out there. Yeah. So you're kind of uh, you're very very uh, savvily uh, is that a word? Um, very very uh, you're diversifying yourself, you know, from the the broader range. So you you kind of maybe you're the only one sort of existing in that uh, premium art book type of space almost. Yeah. No. This this as. As far as I can tell, and I've looked pretty well, um, this was the first real uh, genuine attempt at, a, at an art um, book um, with the clean pages and um, complete focus on the, on the pieces themselves. Um, and really, I haven't really seen much else come that way. I mean, it, it seems like an easy thing, but um, the problem with showing less is the stuff that you show has to be really good so all the images needed to be um, ret retouched and um, sort of beautified uh, the um, backgrounds generally I needed to redo and there was a lot of color correcting and uh, work that needed to be done on that um, sure. particularly <clears throat> it's almost like the pictures are the book uh, for the most part right yeah yeah, I know there mm -hmm. kind of needed to be a way to, to get the book to um, flow and seem like a... Um, cohesive whole? A cohesive whole, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you know how it is. When you, when, you, when you build something, all you can think about is shooting that photo and get it on Flickr or something like that, like right away. And so oftentimes that's what you end up with is that, that image that you hurriedly shot. Or maybe, maybe you did take some time to shoot it, but... Um, you don't have maybe the the right lighting system or the best camera, and um, and so not everyone's photography is 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 um, equivalent, you know. And so yeah. part of the challenge of the book was kind of leveling everything to to get them at a, an equal standard too. And that's what Photoshop is for. <laughs> it's true. It's true. There's a lot, a lot of Photoshop. That I mean, that that uh, um, I spend anywhere from an hour to two to up to ten hours on each image, and you know, when you have three, uh, four hundred m, was it four hundred? Uh, I think it's four hundred images or three hundred and some images. That's a lot of a lot of time. <laughs> like, oh my gosh! Yeah. That is that's dedication right there. <laughs> Yeah. But it really does show through because it, it does kind of come off, you know, flipping. It's almost like uh, they took all of these models to, like, a studio and photographed them in one session. Or yeah, I get, a, I get a lot of people asking me about that. Like, how did, did you travel to every piece and shoot them? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, um, I mean, I think it's really important to, to show off the designer's builds in totally. a way that's really, you know, um, going to make it the best it can be. Now, was that something that was helped with your graphic design background? I'm assuming that came into play somewhat as you were working on the photos? Yeah, I mean, that that is my um, career path. I'm a graphic designer, and um, I have um, the skills there for the for the Photoshop, so um, I, I, can, I can make things look good, you know, and help things along with that. That that definitely helps uh, to have that then. I mean, I think that's perhaps one of the things that sets the books apart is just the fact that it um, it is done that way. It, I think it would be very hard for another person to come and do exactly this sort of format um, because they're going to have to follow the same thing I did. They're not going to have the opportunity to photograph them themselves just like I, I don't. Um, they're going to need to get what they get and then and then work with it and the fact that I have that um, ability I think um, makes it more of a unique product in the end too. Sure. 
And I wanted to make sure we talked about one of your builds that's actually on the cover of the book here. You can see behind me, and I believe there's a photo of it in the book. And that is your sickening, sickening Sweet build. And this is kind of a black and white style uh, build that you did of a kind of a cake candy food array. A really, really interesting build. So much great detail here. So do you want to, can you tell us a little bit about that and some of the, the background of that build? Sure, yeah. I, um, I, most of my pieces are somewhat political or have um, uh, some message behind it. In this, in this case, it has to do with the overconsumption of our culture and um, sort of the, um, this sickening state of affairs that we're at. So this is um, just filled with candies and cakes and so forth. They're all done in black and white. So it's the, it wasn't a color photo that was turned black and white. It's an actual um, black and white piece, just as you see it here. Um, usually I try and, in this case, I really sourced out the best of what I could find, the best um, Lego built cakes, the best flowers. I, someone actually did this. Um, technique with the crochet um, uh, that you see here. Um, so I, I just built on that, uh, allowing it to kind of drape over the edges for a, a dramatic effect. And um, usually I, I just I try and learn from the very best that I could find and um, make it better if I can, either through um, sheer volume or um, or yeah, volume or detail. Um, let's see. I, I have to say, macaroons. Is that what the, the the I see these round with the line running across the top. Is that what you're you're getting at there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, those those are rubber bands, of course. I know. Yeah, that that's uh, that's sweet. I was I was uh, literally. <laughs> Very nice. I, I that's that's that makes me smile seeing that. So. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I was I was really happy with the effect uh, with the effect of kind of the chocolate dribbled over the the, the candies there, and um, I thought the flowers turned out pretty good too. Uh, overall, yeah, I was really happy with the piece. I, I th it, it also was nice because I was coming off of um, I think just before that I had done that huge um, castle build Odan. It was. Uh, 200,000 pieces and took eight months to do. And this was a uh, mere, you know, I don't know, 10 or 15, 10,000, I think I said, pieces. You know, just a throwaway, <laughs> just a little throwaway model here. Uh, <laughs> eight, months well, you're slumming, Mike. You're slumming. Yeah, well, you know, it, if I can do something in two months with, uh, you know, a tenth of pieces or whatever, I'm all for that. <laughs> And it's nice that you're able to kind of synthesize uh, from other people's work somewhat and then kind of come out with uh, this, uh, your own cohesive whole. I mean, much like the book, but uh, I, I suppose no artist creates in a vacuum. And, uh, you know, Lego builders are, are no different. But uh, it, it's very nice to kind of, like, look and see, oh, this, and then I'll do this. And Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the most clever um, a builder um, or uh, mechanically inclined, um, I think, uh, anything that I have to offer here is more in the drama that I can give it um, yeah. through lighting and the photography and, and just um, uh, compositional skills and things like that. Um, so I learn a lot from other builders and um, um, sort of build off what they've done. And sure. that's that's one of my, my favorite parts of the build is the the way you kind of laid it out with the lighting and just gave that effect that adds so much to to what otherwise could be uh, a little more you know kind of boring build if you just kind of put it all together without the correct lighting and the the correct uh, way of laying it out. So I think you did a a really great job with that. And what was the the hardest part of that? Were there any parts that kept kind of falling apart here? It looks like a, there were a few different pieces that could have kind of been falling apart as you were trying to get it going. Anything tough like that for it? Well, thank you. Uh, actually, the grapes were um, a nightmare because uh, um, they were being held by um, what are they called? The the um, the um, the clutch on them getting get basically all, all it took was a sneeze and the whole thing would they'd go. So I I worked on that forever to get them to bunch up and um, 
stick together. Um, a wrench. I think they're little wrenches, maybe, um, that were used to plug into the grape, and then and then that went into um, hoses and other things like that. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, sure. But, I, I see yeah. what you're saying there. Yeah. They were popping off all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> The flowers, too, uh, getting the bunch up like that um, took a lot of um, fancy footwork in the back. Okay, yeah, it, it looks like the flowers in particular would be uh, kind of hard to, get, to keep up like they are. But uh, like I said, it turned out so nice. So how did you decide to... Did you build this specifically to put on the cover of the book, or was this something you built and then decided it looked good there? I think, if I remember right, I might have built it for the book. I, I thought it would look good um, on the cover. It turned out that we needed to crop into it and kind of um, change the mock, but the full mock is in there as well. But if I remember right, that was built um, specifically for for the book. Okay. Very nice. So yeah, very impressive, uh, beautiful build that you were able to include in the oh, book there. You. So... Is, I, I know you've, you've kind of got the beginning copies just coming out. So like I said, you don't even have yours yet. Uh, when will people be able to buy the book? Uh, the book should be out. Uh, well, you can pre-order it now. It uh, should be out in uh, the 20th, which is uh, about 10 days from now of November. So uh, pretty shortly. And so Beautiful Lego, the first one, was distributed Barnes & Noble, lots of national uh, chains. Is, is, is there a similar plan for this one? Yeah, you can you can get it anywhere. Um, any bookstore should have it. Barnes and Noble, Amazon, all of those. Are there any plans to? I, I know um, this is a it's very nice uh, to talk with Adam Reed Tucker about uh, inserting like Lego architecture is kind of taking um, like Lego sets where Lego sets have never been before. Are, are is do you think beautiful Lego is going to be showing up in like any art bookstores or art galleries, anything like that? Well, that that's the hope. I mean, uh, we I have done um, uh, a talk at a museum, her museum in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, where um, they, um, you know, a lot a lot of what's happening too is the uh, museums are picking up on on this as a medium, uh, particularly with Nathan. Uh, so, so, how do you pronounce his name? Soya. Soya. There you go. Yeah. You know uh, all the work he's done in in um, in paving new in new ground and uh, media attention in particular. Uh, museums are are finding this is a really great programming device to get people in, kids and families into their museums. And um, I think the book fits really well as a uh, museum offering, you know, for their bookstores. Um, sure. And I think, you know, looking at ticket sales, too, right? That's the biggie. You know, those uh, Nathan So You never see a photo of that ex exhibition with uh, nobody in it, I guess. Yeah, no, that's true. It, it's <laughs> true. Um, and they can they can develop a lot of programming around it, sure. from uh, kids' events to um, speakers and um, things like that. So uh, more and more museums are, are covering it, which is a good thing. That is really nice to hear. Uh, so you, more and more Lego builders getting involved in museums is always really cool, and getting it out to the the main uh, public, viewing public, is it's always nice to hear that. Yeah, yeah, and, and changing people's perception of it as a toy, and um, I think too that was one of the big goals for the book was to um, get people to see Lego in a whole new light. Um, um, I think with a diverse collection there uh, helps to show. I, in, in the books, I kind of I, I, I bring together um, objects that are very small, little teeny micro builds as well as things that are build, big, so they can get a sense that you know this is something that my child could do too, as well as aspire to do something really big in the future. Getting those neurons firing. Definitely. That's what it's all about. So do you have any projects planned for the future? Maybe any more uh, books in the, the beautiful Lego series or any other big builds coming up? Well, I do. Um, uh, um, depending on how this goes, I'd certainly like to continue this. and We'll see. 
um, have a few ideas in mind for the next book uh, uh, or two. And um, then um, in terms of my own builds, I'm working on um, a few. One um, is a, um, well, I can, I can kind of show it to you a little bit maybe. Um, let's see. I'll show it to you first. I don't know how much you, can you see that a little bit? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. What what I'm working on here is it's it's um, it's a uh, sort of a political piece on what's being done. Um, the uh, Koch brothers and other mining companies no longer uh, satisfied with uh, the profits they've been making by digging into mountains are simply uh, blowing them up now. Mountain top so, removal. Mount MTR. There you go. MTR baby. MTR. <laughs> So uh, they're blowing up the top five, six hundred uh, feet of the mountains in the Appalachians, and they've they've knocked down five hundred uh, mountains so far, which is um, um, the size of um, one of our smaller states. And um, I mean, it just leaves a moonscape. It's essentially a, a flat, uh, barren moonscape on it. Um, so to um, raise awareness to that, I'm working on a that you see here, um, which is just very, very beginning stages now. It'll be a very large forest scene with the top of the mountain completely um, knocked off. Um, That's really cool, it, Mike. Very nice. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating, too. You end up with these areas. Let me see if I could show you. Um, uh, let's see, what are we looking at? Oh, boy. Is that a castle in the, the far left, or is that yeah, like a... I'm pointing very badly because I'm looking at a very thumbnail of my image here. <laughs> uh, I can't really, I can't really point it well enough. But what you end up with there um, on the top of the mountains, these um, these areas where they they leave um, the mount pristine and dig maybe uh, twenty or thirty or forty feet all around it, because um, they'll get people who protest because their family's graveyard is there and so mm -hmm. they're literally just dig um, blow up all the way around it and maybe 50 60 feet down and mm -hmm. so there's just this little teeny mountain standing there with graves literally popping out the edges you know it's I mean it's it's a horrific thing so um, something I'm looking to capture <laughs> here. Definitely, yeah, and also you, you take into account uh, how it kind of pollutes streams, you know, because you're taking all of these toxic, uh, you know, metals, heavy metals from uh, coal, and then, you know, you water, the, you're ruining the flow of rivers and all this crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah, the aquifers are destroyed, and then the, um, they, in the process of um, mining, or process of refining the coal, creates these sludge um, areas that they can't do anything with, so they dam them off but the dams don't last too long. When they break, they head down the valleys and they can destroy um, entire communities, you know, with this toxic sludge. I mean, it, yeah. it's, uh, I'm surprised you know about it. Not too many people, when I talk about mountaintop removal, have ever heard about it. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm very passionate about the subject. I, that's right on Matthew's front door there. Where he goes <laughs> Actually, school, you know, so. you speak of those coal pits, and uh, here in North Carolina, there was a big scandal a couple of months ago uh, where um, a Duke power plant had a bunch of coal ash uh, pits, and they uh, unfortunately burst and ended up leaking into the Dan River. Uh, so they ended up, uh, you know, just all of these heavy metals and toxins. And then there was uh, a big scandal with how the state government handled it because our, our current governor is a former employee of said power company. Oh, so yeah. uh, there might have been a little bit of uh, finagling going on there, but uh, definitely some very dark stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, well, you know, that, that could have made it in my last book too, but uh, <laughs> don't look that stuff. <laughs> Next time. Yeah. So, so you know, my, my next question, you know, this is uh, completely changing subjects, but uh, f the first book was a year and a half. This one was six months. So in two months, we expect to see a book from you. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, um, if I have enough time on the train, you know. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe it's a pamphlet, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's, that's a really fantastic turnaround, though. So it's uh, wonderful to see you putting out new work always. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, some other pieces I'm working on, um, uh, micro-scale city for kids. I, 
a uh, number of communities or a number of um, agencies in the community, a local library and church have asked me to kind of uh, see if I can do something with the kids. So I'm coming together with a, a program where they can, um, with instructions, where they can build all sorts of little buildings and um, takes forever to make instructions. So. Oh, yes. It is an art unto itself. Yeah, I think that that's why you don't see it that often. Yeah, I, I guess that's why. But too late for me now. I'm deep into it. <laughs> <laughs> so is it going to be like a Sim City almost type of concept, like a city, like a map that they're going to lay out? It is. Yeah, it's got all sorts of things from a uh, uh, little performing arts center and hotels to lots of brownstones and uh, little shops, ice cream shack. Um, Power transform or low farm, so you know you can kind of uh, have fun. You know, pick pick what you want to build and have fun placing it next to someone else's. You know. So it's almost like that creation inside of creation. You know, so you're creating it once and then you're you're putting it together, and that's in of itself another. It is layer. Yeah, there is a little bit of that. Yeah, and you mentioned Sim City, and I think um, I don't know something about the micro builds. Uh, I think it really hits on that Sim City, you know, nerve that we all have playing God and looking oh. down on, you know, size. Nothing scraping. better than that. No, it's the best, <laughs> good as it gets. Oh yeah, if if I don't have Lego around, uh, Sim City is definitely uh, playing <laughs> in the background. Oh yeah, that's that's my motto. Very that's cool. Very close second best to, to Lego, but yeah, uh, very very nice. And one thing I've noticed here as we've been talking about your builds and everything, I really like how you know a lot of your builds and the projects that you do, you do with kind of a specific purpose in mind. You aren't just building, you know, to create a cool Lego build. Uh, like you said, you have a lot of political backdrops. A lot of your builds, you've got the you know, this micro city program you're doing, which I think is really neat. And it's something I'd kind of like to see more people do with Lego in the future and try to try to use it for more educational purposes and things like that. Yeah, I think so. I mean, for me, it's just the way I am. I, I, um, I can't really get motivated to make a build that looks um, pre just pretty. Um, it has to kind of have meaning behind it or tell, tell a, a story, usually um, inform people about something. Um, I think the uh, I started with the abandoned house series, and although I really enjoy old um, dilapidated buildings just for their look, um, it also was kind of an account of the mortgage crisis and things that we were going through um, in a number of years ago. Um, and so, if I can, you know, bring a, um, a story or something topical to it that's important, um, it's a really good thing for me. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Well, some, some cool stuff to look forward to in the future then. Was there anything else you had in mind you're working on, or is that uh, about it for now? Um, I've, I've been wanting to work on uh, minerals and crystals because I haven't seen anybody do actual rocks. <laughs> it sounds like a really boring thing. But, I mean, rocks and crystals are really beautiful. You see them in museums all the time. And... Uh, um, I'm taking the challenge up on that one, and that'll be one of my next pieces too, is to do a beautiful uh, mineral collection. So, are uh, you gonna? I, w w what stance are you gonna? Is it gonna be like on natural rocks, like just kind of laying around like a, a display, or are you gonna do like a, a Lego like case or something like that, and then put the rocks in the? Like visually, what are you thinking for display? Uh, uh, well, visually, it'll be photographed. Um, it's, it'll be more typical Mike Doyle thing, where it's just a a beautiful color background to um, offset um, or contrast the colors of the crystal. I won't be making a case unless it uh, goes to a museum or if I take it to a uh, if I happen to take it to a show or something like that. But um, I think it would lend itself really good to cases, like you say. Um, so Definitely. Sort of but I, I think, I, I like you said, the typical Mike Doyle thing, because, uh, you know, your builds are in of themselves creations, but it's like the, the photograph, you know, that's the final product. So yeah. that's really what you should be looking at. Yeah, people always cringe because um, uh, I'm immediately after I get a photograph and I know it's final, um, I'm, I'm all over the mock just tearing it apart. And people can't understand, you know, how you can do that, but... Um, I tell you, it's the most wonderful feeling when the thing is is 
is now over your head and uh, um, um, taking up space for one thing, and for another, you're always worried about it falling apart anyway. You know, knocking yeah. it over, kids, <laughs> yeah. kids running by. So uh, it's the a liability huge, is gone. The liability and the peace count is goes way up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, very cool stuff. So I think that it sounds like there's a lot of interesting and awesome projects coming to us in the future from you. So we'll definitely look forward to that, Mike. So I, I think that about wraps it up for us tonight. Uh, it was great talking with you about your, your new book. Uh, definitely, everyone, I encourage you to go out as soon as you can and get this book. Uh, really, really awesome book. Hope, Mike, that you get a copy yourself soon. But <laughs> One day. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll definitely make sure to include a link in the description to uh, the builds we talked about and then also where you can pre-order the book. So if you're interested in buying it, you can check that out as well. Definitely encourage you to check that out. And don't forget about the Brick Builders Club, which is bringing out new and awesome LEGO content uh, every month. They'll deliver it right to your door. Uh, you can find out how to sign up at brickbuildersclub.com. Uh, some really cool stuff going on over there. I encourage you to check that out. I'll make sure to include a link to their website in the description as well. So it was great having you on the show, Mike. Thanks for well, taking thank the time you. to talk with us. Well, thank you for, for having me again. It's nice talking to you, too. And thanks sure. for all you do. I, I mean, your show is is fantastic resource, again, um, like I was telling you before the show, and also what you do for the um, the uh, the shows, the the, um, the cons. Um, you know, it's, for myself and doing the books, it's really hard to find... Um, sometimes new builders or new things that think people haven't seen before and being able to have um, what you show as, as a sort of living library there is really fantastic so thank you for that too oh definitely yeah we're cool. happy happy we can help out that way we enjoy doing it so yeah I'm glad that works out well so uh, very good yeah it was nice having you on and uh, thanks everybody out there for watching Encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube page here at Beyond the Brick to make sure you don't miss any of our future episodes. And we're also on uh, Twitter and Google Plus. Uh, we'll have links to those li in the description as well, so you can follow us there to keep up to date with everything we're doing as well. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week.